Hello, everyone. Welcome to the first geospatial data community of practice session. Uh, today, we are honored to have two very distinguished speakers, uh, Professor Robert Hyman from UC Davis and Ani Gosh, data scientist at the Alliance of Bibles DNC at based in Nairobi, Kenya. If you have done any geospatial data science or data, data analysis in R, you must have you know, heard of him, heard of them, or used their product already. Uh, so they developed one of the most widely used R packages uh, called Raster, and also developed and contributed so many other uh, data, data, uh, data science libraries all around the world uh, being used by so many data scientists. Uh, and some of the most popular data product they develop, uh, including our World Clean and Gardem. And today we are excited to learn more about their latest work called Terra and also Luna and a few other data, uh, data science packages that uh, I'm sure we will also be really enjoying um, using uh, in, in the near future. So uh, we will learn more about those and how to use them in, in, in our work. So uh, Robert, uh, I will ask you to take the stage from here and we will also hear continuously from Ani. And after that, we will have some Q&A discussion through the chat box and questions that you can answer. So uh, feel free to type your questions now uh, or throughout the webinar and then uh, we will pick up uh, those questions after your presentation. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Jawa. It's a real pleasure to be um, back here, wherever, wherever here is. Uh, and share some of our um, recent work in developing new R software with you. So let me see if I can indeed share my screen. And there you go. So I'm gonna talk a bit about the package Terra and then Ani Gorsh will talk about Luna, which is it's connected to it. Uh, these are two packages that we're developing in a, which are part of a larger um, R data analysis ecosystem that, we, that we're developing. The broad context, of course, is to, to do spatial data science, um, in this case, in the R environment. So first, okay, what, what is spatial data science? I think it's important to have, you know, to establish it a bit, to, to put what I'm talking about in context, you know, why are we doing this? So I define a spatial data scientist as someone who writes code to create reproducible workflows for analyzing complex data with appropriate analytical methods, hopefully informed by domain knowledge. And so a couple of things here. The, you know, I, I emphasize complex data rather than big data. I think as, as you know, spatial people, we are very quite used to big data, although, and you know, and you know, particularly with those of us working with satellite images. But the real bottleneck is often more the complexity than the amount. Well, the amount can also be overwhelming, though. Both both are important. But particularly in agriculture research, you know, putting together data from field trials, perhaps, or uh, farm surveys with remote sensing data and other data, and making making uh, you know the best use of these different data sets um, with new and, and interesting new methods. Um, this can be a really interesting challenge, and and. Um, that's I find really fascinating that you know we can actually do these things now because of the uh, software uh, we have. Whereas you know when I started this kind of work, the practicalities of of, of uh, that kind of work were um, almost insurmountable. So the practical problems of it. So code to create reproducible workflows um, to do fun stuff with. And you know when I say reproducible, uh, I would emphasize you know reproducibility means that you have data and you have a script. So the CTR is really uh, at the forefront of sharing data and open data and, and really sort of internationally, uh, in, particularly within the, in the agriculture domain anyway, um, you know, there is no other organization uh, like it. And um, there's, there's so much open data now that can be used. But without um, actually the script, without, you know, the instruction of how to analyze these data, you cannot reproduce somebody else's work, but what's much worse, you cannot reproduce your own work. So you cannot really build on your own work. You cannot really learn from your own mistakes. Um, and so reproducibility is key uh, these days. You need, you need some kind of a script. Um, and again, it's not, not just to be able to check other people's work, but it's really also to, to speed up your own work and to be able to innovate just the click, you know, point and click mouse kind of analysis that just doesn't scale. 
All right, so then this question, okay, now if that's necessary, what do we use, Python or R or something else? Um, I, I used to say, or still say perhaps, you know, Python to me is more a programmer's kind of language. It's more formal computer languages language. R is often more suitable for researchers. You're a bit closer to the data. You, it's, it's more suitable for unique idiosyncratic research projects, whereas Python is particularly suitable for more, you know, um, computing infrastructure kind of projects. But really, in the end, it doesn't matter. Um, but but these, are the, these are the two big ones um, that most people in, in, in data science work with. Um, I'll be talking about R, but I'll be also mentioning some of the links with Python that, that I've been making in, you know, in, in this new uh, R work. All right, so spatial data in R, what do we have? Well, for I think, Several of you, maybe most of you, uh, have maybe looked at this at some point, and for the past decade or so, there were you know, three main packages. So package is a plugin for R um, that, that expands the general um, language and software. And that's the success of R. So R, R, you know, the base R program can do quite a bit, but really not that much. It's the, it's the individual, it's the packages that have been contributed by researchers uh, after you know, working in some specialized domains such as spatial data um, that have made R this ecosystem where you can basically do anything. Um, so we used to have RGDAL for you know, data input output, uh, SP package for um, particularly for vector data. And then I, and then I wrote a roster package uh, now about, gosh, um, 12 years ago or so I started that when I was at IRI. Um, in collaboration with Jacob van Etten, who's now at um, uh, Bioversity SIAT. And later on, he also uh, contributed to it. So it's a roster has been along, uh, around for a long time. And I think it's, it's been a work, you know, sort of the, the central to a lot of uh, data analysis and agriculture research, because a lot of, of, of the stuff we do is roster based. So what was good about Roster? Well, it had no file size restrictions, which was, really, which was really important because most R software assumes you can just load all data files into memory, uh, which with large uh, spatial data sets is clearly not possible. So uh, the Roster package worked around that by just processing uh, files chunk by chunk. It has many, many functions to manipulate Roster data as well as vector data, actually. Um, so essentially, you know, the, the, the typical sort of spatial analyst or you see, you know, all these function, functionality, zonal, global, local, focal functions, it's all there. Uh, and it's, I think, you know, we emphasize simplic sim you know, simplicity, trying to make it as easy to use as possible. And I think that you're quite successful in that. The real uh, motivation for me to start this at that time when I was at Erie was to integrate spatial data with machine learning. Um, and so to get out of these silos where you had to do, you know, GIS, uh, as it was called then in sort of ArcGIS and then, uh, you know, maybe statistical analysis or machine learning in something like R, what, you know, I wanted it all integrated. The bad, well, there's a lot of functions and so maybe too many, you know, it's gonna be hard to find out what you need to do. And there was some unnecessarily complexity that, that has slipped in largely because of the path dependency, you know, I, we developed it and then extended it and added more things. And before you know it, you have complexity that could be reduced. But now, uh, it, you know, right now there's like 300 other R packages that depend on Ruster. So I cannot change things the way they are. Um, there, there would be too much software down the line that, that would break if I make, make these changes in the Ruster package. So I can no longer simplify it. Um, and the other thing is it's pure R code, so I cannot easily, or anyone else, uh, repurpose the code in another programming environment. Well, and then the ugly, uh, too slow. You know, for years I used to say, well, you know, just go to the beach for the weekend or go have a cup of coffee. Because um, it doesn't matter if your computer is slow, what's important is your time. So as long as it's easy to write a script, try them small on a small data set and then just let it go on the big data set and come back when it's done or, or work on another computer or something else. Um, yeah, but you know, that there, there's some, some, some uh, limits to that. Uh, speed is important and increasingly so because of the amount of data we, we wanna work with. Another limitation, an example of another limitation is that you know, it could, uh, Raster Package cannot natively read ACF5 uh, format files. 
um, which particularly in satellite data, uh, analysis is then a big problem because you have to use all kinds of other tools first to prepare the data. And again, you know, I like these simple workflows and Andy might, might speak a bit about uh, uh, that. So that was the problem with the roster package. And then the Teta package is this new replacement for roster. It's very sim similar. You know, most of the functions have the same names, but there's fewer functions because they have been, you know, streamlined. Um, so it's simpler, but maybe the most important thing is much faster and more capable. It can, it can do more things, even though it's simpler. At least. It was released this year, on March 20th. Since then, there have been uh, maybe five different uh, versions coming out. I think it's still called the beta version. Maybe the next version won't be called that anymore, but it's still uh, pretty early days. Um, but I've seen quite a lot of uh, uptake. And so I hope that, um, you know, if, you, if you've used Rust in the past, you know, have, give Terra a go. So why is it faster? What's different in that sense? And I'm getting a bit into the, um, you know, the deeper into sort of the software engineering side of it. Uh, I don't have a similar slide for Roster, but Roster essentially most of the things, most of the data analysis happened within R, communicating with other packages such as, such as RGDAL that maybe would then go to C, back to Roster, back to RGDAL, et, et cetera. So there was a lot of inefficiency. The Terra package really is a C++ program. Uh, Central is what I call the SPAT library that uses at the C, C++ level, GDAL and GEOS and NetCDF, so these standard uh, C libraries. And because of that, you know, and, and all the analytical uh, functions are also in C++, and because of that, they're really fast. Then there's this thin wrapper, this layer, this module, this RCPP module, that allows communication with R. So all that R does is says essentially, oh, well, here's, here's some input, give me this output, sends it to C, it's produ produced, and then R gives you, tells you basically, well, okay, here's the result. So because of that, um, many functions are much, much faster. Another big advantage of this setup is that, you know, the, the work, the code that does the work is not written R anymore. It's, it's, it's common C. C++ code so that it can be repurposed. You can, you know, I can, I can make standalone programs that do the same things, but also, and I haven't done that yet, you know, you, I could make an interface, but I plan to make an interface through the Boost uh, um, software with Python. So, in that, so if, when that comes out, you would have essentially the same workflows you could do in R and in Python with essentially the same uh, functions and, and, and so it'd be very comparable. So somebody would say, oh, I have this other module of Python I want to use with this workflow, could then very easily switch between R and Python and, and vice versa. Another big aspect of um, what we're doing right now is that it's just, yeah, you know, it's not Terra is, is, is sort of the nucleus for spatial analysis, but it's still, it's, that's very general, very generic, you know, it does well do the overlays and the, and the, and the cropping and uh, aggregating of data, but it doesn't do anything is particular in these, any specific tasks. So uh, over the past years, uh, my lab has been quite uh, active in, de in developing other types of R packages as well that, that relate to um, agriculture research and that interact well with, with Terra and, and with Roster as well, actually. But, but I'm particularly focusing on Terra these days. So this includes um, Packages for crop modeling are Wofost, are Quefts. Both of these are available on, on CRAN, so have been published. Our eco crop, uh, that's still on GitHub, but you can get it from there. And there's more coming. Uh, there's also packages that, that help you um, get access to data um, without having to, you know, in your script through a one line sort of request. So that, again, you know, reproducibility is increased. So that includes a geodata package and a Luna package that, that Annie will talk about. And of course, maybe the most important part, well, you know, more data analytical uh, tools. Again, Luna has some of that. There's the predicts package that's still on GitHub book, book, uh, that, this, that partly replaces Dismo, so for spatial uh, predictive modeling. And of course, you know, this is what we're doing. Uh, as I said earlier, Roster has about 300 other packages that depend on it. So other people have, you know, write their packages for, for whatever their, their specific interest with spatial data is and and you know that will also um you know eventually grow for terra i'm sure although right now it's only 
you know, four other packages, I think, that, that formally uh, use it. Uh, but that's not so bad after half a year. Uh, I, you know, it's probably going to be uh, many more a year from now. All right, so now if you want to learn all this and if you're interested, um, here's one important resource, rspatial slash Terra. You know, there's, a compa there's an rspatial.org slash roster that is a, a bit more, um, a bit larger at this point. So Terra is, is newer and so I'm still working on this. Um, but some of the basics are there so you can um, have a look at that and see, and see if, if this interests you. Feel free to also write me if you have particular specific questions. And another um, resource that We'll probably launch or fish formally by the end of this year, um, essentially working on agronomy at scale or what I call regional agronomy. We're still uh, you know, debating the, 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 the term we should use for it, but essentially thinking about you know, how, how, how do we scale up? You know, how, how do, what are the tools you need to think about agriculture production, not at particular sites, but in regions, countries, continents? Uh, to do impact assessments, to understand, you know, uh, adoption technology, to to help build um, advisory service for farmers, uh, to implement um, insurance, uh, agriculture insurance programs, etc. Et so this is going to be a this, this is starting to be a, a quite a large uh, a website, and I'll I'll probably eventually, you know, later this year, send an email out to. Um, you know, the CSI uh, listserv, you know, requesting for um, feedback and particularly also case studies. So I'll be, I'll be looking for people who, who are using R and have an interesting case study they might want to uh, share. So that's, you know, really um, all I want to say about the Terra package. Pretty briefly, I didn't want to go into showing examples, um, but, but you can look that those up at the website and also um, Annie will, um, do some of that, but I do hope that with what I've shown you, you come away with understanding a what you know why why this is important, or if, if you didn't have an understanding anyway. But but um, that's what I want to emphasize. You know, it's really important to have to use tools like this, but also um, hopefully some excitement in that you know these tools are um, getting better and better, um, making it easier uh, to do uh, the innovation and the research that and other research that uh, you may want to do. And so with that, I'll, I'll give the floor to Annie. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Robert, uh, for the uh, wonderful uh, description on the data package and how the ecosystem is develop developing around the data package. So, and also mentioning about the Luna. So uh, basically, I should a uh, little bit briefly talk about uh, why you started uh, working on Luna. So Luna, this basically gives you access to satellite data. So uh, we, have been working on using raster package or Terra package, doing a lot of analysis, but we didn't have any streamlined workflow to get the satellite data. So we, we were working on a couple of big projects which required now like processing MODIS data from 2000 or 2002. That means we are looking at like thousands of MODIS styles that we needed to download. So when I started looking into the available options, there are many but none of them were just doing the work that we needed to do. Like we just wanted to have the data, like it was not simple. So uh, it, it had, those packages had a lot of dependencies and I'm not saying they are bad, like they are wonderful packages, but at the same time, it needed quite a bit of effort uh, to set those packages, to install those and like uh, figure out the dependencies. So that's when we started working on Luna with the sole objective of like making the uh, workflow for getting satellite data simple and also easily integrating that with the uh, remaining analytics. So, uh, so uh, what, what, best about, what is different about Luna? It's basically like you don't, ha you don't have to uh, worry about uh, GDAL installs uh, that is coming from different other software, like for example, QGIS, or you have to do standalone GDAL installs uh, sometimes. Uh, and the purpose is basically to read HDA5 files, what Robert mentioned, uh, what was one of the drawbacks of raster package. Like you need to, some most, many of the satellite data, they are uh, provided in HDA5, and then you need to convert them to GOT uh, for any kind of application. So uh, my talk would be pretty much on the applied case. I will talk a little bit about how Luna works, and then show you some examples about uh, Luna in action. So setup it is at this stage, uh, it's still, it is on GitHub, so you can install it from GitHub. And to use that, 
uh, you need uh, credentials from this NASA Art Data website. So you have to go there and create a new user and password. And if you remember it, because what, the first time you try to download the data set, it will ask for you. Now, in terms of the background, it's basically the idea is very simple. The user will request the data set for an area uh, for a time period uh, for which they are interested in, and they will provide the uh, data product name. We'll see the example before. Uh, after that. So uh, what it does is basically once the user requests it, uh, there is a post request that is uh, sent to the NASA CMR catalog. And that's why Luna is uh, quite different from uh, several other packages uh, that it is using the NASA common metadata repository, uh, which, it, which actually gets continuously updated as new data sets are in, in, integrated into the DAP system. So uh, when and then when it goes when it gets a result, it basically you have two options. You can see the results or you can download it. And to download it, you have to authenticate your user uh, using the art data credentials. And once you have that, then it gets a lot easier because then you can just uh, bring in data in action and start the like basic reprocessing, uh, some kind of car fitting, noise removing, cloud masking kind of applications, and then take the data to your known uh, workflow. So this is the general uh, structure. Uh, everything is uh, happening in the backend, so you don't have to uh, uh, like worry about any of this. And it's written in R. Uh, there, there are some functions which are written in C++, but mostly written in R. Uh, okay, now we'll see one of the example cases where we'll try to search for data set uh, from Luna. So basically, how do you start? You just say library Luna, library trainer. And this function, get products, will give you all the different products that, it, that can be uh, downloaded or searched through the interface because it is going and querying through the CMR uh, record. Uh, theoretically, any data set that is in the NASA DAC system can be accessed through this. Now, uh, if you want to learn more about uh, it, the, how, how Luna works or like more example cases, then you can either visit this website or the uh, art special data website that Robert uh, just uh, showed shown earlier. So basically to search what is data, what you, what you can define first is a study area for which we are interested in. Let's say we are looking for a data set from uh, for Kisumu, one of the counties in Kenya, and we want to find data sets for sometime between 2020, the first week of 2020. Uh, so basically we say that, okay, get modules, which is the primary function, uh, and it will, and you have to define which, uh, provide which data you want. Um, and this is, this is where it gets a bit tricky because, you know, you have to learn, you have to know about all these product names. So let's say here I'm trying to download one of the most widely used modis product, which is mod 09A1. Uh, and then we are say, saying that, okay, give me all for all these products for Kisumu between, uh, for the first week of uh, 2020. So when you do that, it will do nothing. Uh, it, will know, it will not do anything uh, in terms of downloading, but it will just give you the uh, products that is available in the uh, data store, uh, not a NASA data store. Now, once you, once you look at it, and uh, let's say you want to get all of these data sets, so you just add a few more uh, lines, a few more arguments to it. You will just say, okay, download it, and to a directory where you want to keep the data. Depending on your download speed, it takes time. Um, uh, but once you have downloaded it, there comes the best part. So this one single function, R is equal to Rust F mod one. So F mod one is basically I'm the, I'm trying to read the first HDF five file uh, from the files that have been downloaded, and this one four character function, it's basically does what it used to be. Uh, a lot of complex process to get that uh, product into R. Now, once that once you have it in R, uh, it's this uh, this R uh, variable. It's basically a stack raster, which is the native uh, format for storing the raster object in there. Uh, and then you can do some quick subsetting of the banks. Let's say for for this analysis we are looking into, we just want to do uh, we just want to have uh, four banks, which are uh, red uh, or five bands, which are basically red, uh, near infrared, blue, uh, one of the sort of infrared, and quality band. Quality band is important because we'll use that to mask the noisy pixels. And then you can also rename the bands. So it's, it's very simple. Uh, it's it's just does the the thing that we we were interested in. Get get the data, read the data, 
and give me the bands we want to work with. Let's say we are trying to uh, compute a vegetation index here. Now, how does it look like? Uh, so in the left-hand side, we have the original image. We didn't do any kind of masking or anything. That's what the original image looks like. There are a lot of blue pixels. Those are coming mostly from the cloud. So what we need to do is to say that we have to create a quality mask based on the quality band and say that you don't want those uh, pixels to occur. So you, you can, so th these are, this, this is why you, someone with a little bit of remote sensing background or understand how these products work. So this quality band, this comes with a bit mask. So you have to know how to uh, like translate the bit mask to actual uh, data set. So once you do that, uh, and we show in the first two lines how to do that. Once you, once you do that, you, you come up with a mask. So the center image, you can see the mask. So the blue, sorry, so the green ones, it shows uh, the clear pixels and the white one is basically where the pixels are unusable uh, based on your definition of the mask. And you use that mask to uh, mask out the cloudy pixels. And on the right-hand side, you get the mask image uh, that you can use for uh, any further processing. So let's say from here, we just want to convert this uh, to a computer vegetation index and save this data for future use. So uh, the way to do that is very simple. If you have used raster, then it's the same, uh, similar kind of uh, uh, equations that you need to write. It's basically an algebraic equation to get the India index, and you can easily save that to uh, a GOT file uh, in your local storage. And this is all it what takes. Now, uh, the final product looks like this. Now, how long did it take? Uh, I'm not going to talk about the download downloading time because it depends on the bandwidth. But for the after you have downloaded for a single file to go from uh, reading the HDF5 file to save the EVI, it takes around 10 seconds on a pretty old Linux machine, five years old Linux machine running on a single core. Now, imagine if you have access to a big set of machine where you can run the process in parallel you can easily run it. And although we were working on a full swath of Modix product, there was never any issue with uh, memory or uh, uh, files, file size. So that's one of the best things what Robert was mentioning, going back to his uh, first uh, few slides, like there, there is no basically file size limit on uh, the process for when you are processing this uh, kind of data set using that Tera package or even a raster package. But in Tera, it makes it much, much faster. And also the Snitic support for reading HDF5 file. Now, uh, this is just an example. You can do a lot more. Uh, you can, uh, you can, download any of the Modix products and work on it. You can do time series analysis. Uh, you can download the Landsat data. Uh, so far, we are only supporting NASA uh, data set that is uh, distributed by NASA. Uh, also, there is AVHR support, uh, but very soon we are thinking about expanding the package. So what is there now? So uh, basically in, in any data set that is, uh, you can find through the CMR uh, record that you can search and hopefully download. Uh, what you can do, uh, you can do uh, some card fitting techniques uh, for uh, noise removing. For example, service key the filter is already uh, there in a function. Uh, it, it's, uh, you, you can use that for creating smooth time series uh, of uh, satellite records for vegetation records. Uh, and then you can do some uh, other operations also that Robert was mentioning before. Uh, now, what we, what we want to do with this next? Definitely you have to release it in Pran. That's our next plan. And also support for Sentinel and Planet. That's coming pretty soon. Uh, and there is one other thing that I'm, I'm particularly very interested in, basically to support the LPDAC appears API. And it's, it's what it does is you don't need to download the image. You basically uh, request your uh, requirement to the API, to the API. And it happens uh, in uh, one of the servers in NASA and it provides you the output. So it saves you from uh, getting the data. And that is sometimes useful when you, uh, you don't have a good bandwidth or a storage, large storage to work with. And then also add more pre-processing algorithm. So for example, we want to add more card fittings algorithms like uh, uh, harmonic filters or logistic regressions, which, which are kind of used uh, quite a which are kind of popular for uh, remote sensing community. So those, those will be added pretty soon. Now, but 
and again, like basically what this package gives you in, com in combination, what data and Luna gives you is uh, your old, if, if, you, if you have been working with uh, raster before, like what this package finally gives you is uh, the same format that you are familiar with. Like you don't have to worry about uh, how to deal with any kind of uh, unknown file formats. It basically takes care of everything and uh, gives you the, uh, easy, uh, something that you can quite easily use for you know, for any any kind of uh, further processing, be it any kind of machine learning uh, algorithm or any kind of time series algorithm or any kind of uh, other uh, spatial operation that you might be interested in. So that's all from my end. Um, and again, like if you have any questions, uh, I'll feel free to ask. We'll be happy to answer, uh, and hopefully we'll be. Uh, release it, we'll be able to release that in CRAN soon and uh, would love to hear, um, hear your feedback on this package. Thank you.